Hi there guys, it's uh, Stephen here from the VT group of companies, and that is Vertitec, Acacia Engineering, and Qualistat. Um, the easiest way to find me is at energyexperts.ca, and that's again energyexperts.ca. So this week was a little bit of an interesting week, and I thought I'd have a quick chat about what I have discussed with a couple of clients this week. One was a friend of mine who was his daughter's house, and the other one was actually my sister's home. So the bigger issue on both of these homes, very similar issues, so I thought I would have a conversation that would help you and help all other viewers as well, um, was talking about condensation on windows and what are some of the solutions. So one of these houses here in Calgary, the other house I'm talking about is on Vancouver Island, um, obviously different uh, weather conditions, but the issue is exactly the same. When we get condensation on windows, there is, Normally two reasons. One, our moisture level in the home um, has reached, has gone too high that we're hitting what we call dew point. Dew point is when the moisture falls out of the air and that's that condensation that starts to form on your windows. So if we get to a point that the surface temperature of the window is cold enough and the humidity level, the relative humidity is high enough, we're going to get condensation. So there's really two solutions to it. One, you change the temperature of the glass. How do you do that? You upgrade your windows. The alternative to this is to change the humidity. Well, let's start off what the cause of humidity in a home is first. So in a home, people give off moisture, pets, showering, cooking, bathing, all of those are giving off moisture. If you've got a fish tank, that gives off moisture. So one of the first things to do is try and control the relative humidity in the house. Make sure you're sitting somewhere in that sort of 25, 20%. As it gets colder, you wanna be able to drop the humidity. So one of the very, very first things is think about have you got exhaust fans? Are you using them? And we're gonna talk about solutions to this in a bit, but think about where the moisture comes from. That's your first, first step, is where is the moisture coming from in your home? If you have showers running and bathroom fans aren't running, you're gonna get moisture. If your dryer is venting to the inside of the house, you're gonna have excessive moisture. If you're drying clothes into the house, it's gonna have lots of moisture. You've got an excessive number of plants, you're gonna have lots of moisture. So if your humidity levels are high, you really need to find a way to control those humidity levels. Um, if you're having humidity problems, think about getting yourself a hygrometer, which allows you to measure the humidity in the home and helps you understand what those humidity levels are. So if you're looking at this video and trying to think about what to do about it, look around and say what's causing the humidity in the house. For the record, outside air leakage is doing exactly the opposite. A house that's well sealed um, was one that will end up with lots of humidity. A house that leaks like a sieve does not tend to have high humidity because outside air tends to dry. So the symptoms are you get condensation, it forms on the glass, it runs down, it settles on your windowsills, causing window rot, makes them look ugly, sometimes you can get mold. That's some of the symptoms you've got from that. Some, in some worst case scenarios, particularly in uh, colder climates, you can get lots of ice formation. So what are the solutions? Okay, so we identified the problem. Next thing we want to do is identify solutions. Well, as I said, first one, let's control the moisture inside the home or the relative humidity inside the home. And how would we actually do this? One, turn on bathroom fans. Use kitchen exhaust fans. Make sure you're using the appliances that you have in the house to exhaust air out to the outside when you're creating high humidity. So if you only have one bathroom exhaust fan, it's probably not sufficient. You have, should have one per bathroom, should have a kitchen exhaust that exhaust to the outside. Um, that is taking the moisture out of the home. Make sure your dryer is correctly vented and du uh, ducted to the outside. Um, don't dry clothes inside the house. But we can get a little more creative on how we can control these and solve these problems on an ongoing basis. So let's talk about that bathroom fan. One, make sure you have a working bathroom fan. Um, you want one that ideally is even controlled off what we call a dehumidistat. So a dehumidistat means it measures the humidity in the bathroom. When the humidity goes above a certain level, it will turn on and will run until such time as the moisture in that bathroom has dropped. Um, you can use it onto a, put it onto a timer, it's an alternative way, or you can just leave it on for longer periods of time. But my recommendation is, let's do this from a controls point of view. There's quite a few manufacturers. I've dropped a link in, the, uh, in here and a photograph of one. It's called a dehumidistat, not a humidistat, it's a dehumidistat. It does the opposite to a humidistat. You can even get fans, and I've put an image in here of one that you can get that actually has the dehumidistat built right into the fan and that will turn on and off 
automatically. So you don't even have to worry about installing the dehumidistat, just changing the fan. The humidity in your home could actually be coming from your own humidifier. I guess that would, could have been one of the causes. So think about if you have a humidifier, in both cases of these two houses I was looking at this week did not have humidifiers, so that was not the cause of the problem. However, we can't ignore the fact that a lot of people have humidifiers, and what you're meant to do is adjust the set point on your humidistat. This is the humidistat, this is turning the humidifier on, the dehumidistat is to reduce humidity. The humidistat will turn the humidifier on when the humidity drops below a certain level. You want to manage your humidity in the house, so you want to be able to have a humidifier, as in adding moisture at certain times, and dehumidifying, but not through a, de a dehumidifier, but just through the dehumidistat, which controls the exhaust fan. Ventilation air is perfect for doing the drying of the home. Now, what I was saying with the humidistat, you want to control the humidity based on outside temperature. I'm here sitting in my living room talking to you on a really nice uh, February day, it's uh, about five degrees above. Today, there's no issues with having too much humidity. We're probably sitting about 35, 40% humidity in the home. Not an issue whatsoever. I've got triple pane windows. I'm not going to have any condensation. However, I've got hardwood floors in here that I want to make sure on night have a nice humidity level so they don't crack. I've got the furniture, I've got paintings. I want to make sure that, that the humidity levels are not too dry either. But as it gets colder, and um, we will get colder, um, when we get to that minus 20, minus 30, and lower, we're going to have to drop the humidity set point inside the house to match what's happening outside. That's the best way to do it. You can do it manually. A lot of the humidistats have a controller on them. So either you adjust it down manually. Alternatively, hook it up to something like an Ecobee thermostat. You know I love my Ecobee thermostats. I think they're a great technology, and they will do that for you. They go and look at the outside temperature, and they adjust the humidity based on outside temperature. It's called an ambient reset humidistat. One of these homes only had one bathroom fan, and the other problem was the bathroom fan had a little three-inch duct to the outside. So first of all, the ducting was too small. The humidity wasn't going out the house. Um, when you buy a bathroom fan, make sure it's got a decent CFM. Look at the sound level. You normally want something like a 0.3 sewn level. It's a low sound level, so it's not annoying you to have it run for long periods of time. And it will run because you've got the dehumidistat control. In other words, you want to reduce the humidity. That's the sort of control that you want. The other thing, if you go and look at the installation manual for most fans, the diameter coming off the back of the fan might be sort of a three inch. They normally recommend one that you upsize at a minimum of one diameter. So in other words, if it's a three inch, you would go to a four, a four might go to a five. You want as fewer restrictions in the ductwork as possible so the air is going to the outside. Do not ever vent your attic, your fan directly into the attic. You're gonna cause all sorts of other problems. It must be vented to the outside. Make sure it's also installed in accordance with manufacturer's literature by upsizing the ductwork by normally one minimum number of bends. Try not to use flexible ductwork if you can, rather use rigid ductwork and make sure it's got a good backdraft damper. So it's a quiet fan, got the right size ductwork directly to the outside. Um, make sure it's bigger ductwork than normally directly on the fan. Um, the next thing you want to do is interlock that if you've got a forced air system, like my uh, client here in Calgary, she's got a furnace, so link that, interlock that with a furnace, so when that is on, the furnace fan is on and this will give us a negative ventilation system. Better yet, have this wired all the way back to the, the uh, um, thermostat or a switch next to the thermostat, which is what we call a ventilation switch. You can turn that on, run your fan for a long period, your furnace for a long period of time, of time, which gives you the drying and gives you good ventilation, interlocked with the exhaust fan and the two run at the same time, and that would ventilate your home and give you fresh outside air. Why do I bring this up? Because it also takes the moisture out of your home and controls that humidity. So ideally you want to be able to control your fan from a switch, let's say your uh, summer switch, or that's what some people call it, or just a ventilation switch somewhere that's easy accessible, normally near the thermostat, and then that would be interlocked with the furnace, so the furnace would come on at low speed and would mix the air, and there's lots and lots of reasons, I've had this conversation numerous times, why you want to run that furnace fan in low speed or in continuous mode um, to keep moving air, better humidity control, better filtration, and better air movement. So by doing this, you're controlling the moisture, you're getting rid of moisture, you're drying air out, the air out by having this ventilation, that's what you need to do. 
Again, if you are gonna, in this case, one of these clients' cases, they're gonna add extra insulation to the attic. Do the fan before you do the attic insulation. No contractor wants to walk around in 18, 20 inches of insulation. So make sure you put the fan in before you actually, um, and the ductwork before you do the insulation of the attic. The next thing to control is the temperature of the glass. So if we've controlled the humidity inside the home, which is great, we've stopped getting too much moisture, we're getting moisture out and we're drying it, which is fabulous. The next thing was, I said at the beginning, you've got to think about how do you control the, either the temperature or the humidity. We've been working on the humidity as a big, big component of this. The next piece that I want to talk about is the temperature of the glass. Well, this really only one way to do that and that is to upgrade your windows so by putting a better quality window triple pane window ideally so it's a triple pane window with a low emissivity coating argon gas in between that's going to give you a warmer surface temperature again if we've got higher humidity warmer surface temperature we are not going to see that condensation so make sure you maybe up think about upgrading your windows it's not an all either all this or all that it is a conversation of doing both in a lot of cases. So upgrading the windows to a better quality window. Don't forget the Green Homes program has a grant up to uh, 250 per window. Um, when you upgrade windows, improves resale value. There's a whole video I did on why would you want to upgrade your windows. Now, not everybody's got the budget to upgrade the windows and I appreciate that, so control the humidity. Maybe do some windows now, some windows in the future. But if you do get condensation on your windows, make sure you keep it dry. The next thing you wanna do is you might sometimes get mold build up, and that's not unusual. Everybody gets that if they get condensation. Get rid of the moisture, and then go to CMHC. I'll put a link in the bottom here, the CMHC. Um, they have a nice document on how to get rid of mold. Just clean it up. Dry it out, clean it up, and you can control the mold. It's not unusual to get mold, but make sure you're always cleaning it up um, and looking after your windows, and you'll get good longevity. And last but not least, there is another item that you want to consider. If you have a forced air system, I, like I do in this house, like my client here in Calgary, you want to be able to run that furnace fan, spoke about a few moments ago, on a more continuous basis, so you're getting air movement across those windows. So think about that. If you've got your furnace fan running, more is continuously. We'll talk about the Hoimi damper. Don't forget about that. There's a whole video I did on the Hoimi damper. Take, take a look at that video as well. But we want to get air movement across those windows because that's going to help it dry and keep dry. So even though it's cold, get that air movement running the furnace fan continuously through either the ventilation switch or through the thermostat where you can control the amount of times that the furnace fan is running. Make sure, for example, um, when you drop your blinds, maybe leave a little gap at the bottom because that's going to allow air to move over those. Open the blinds as much as you can. Um, the other thing that you want to do is keep interior doors open so your house has got lots of air movement around them. What you find in certain rooms, um, particularly when people are sleeping at night, there's lots of moisture, if the doors are closed, you don't get the air movement around the house and therefore you can get higher humidities in those areas and that creates more condensation. So hopefully that helps you on those. Um, in the one case here, look at the image on this one glass uh, window um, that we've inserted. This is a, a double slider with actually four panes of glass. This is fairly typical for older homes here in Calgary, um, but they are all around. Calgary gets a lot colder than other parts of Canada. You've got two panes of glass and a gap, and then another two panes of glass. These windows actually don't do a terrible job. They're really old, but moist air gets in between the first, between the two panes of glass, condenses as it hits that outer surface, and that whole window frosts up and you can't see through it at all. So really those windows need to be upgraded um, and that's gonna make a significant difference. So the reason that's happening is because you've got warm moist air, it's getting between the two panes of glass on the first layer, gets in between the next two, condenses against the outer layer, which is very cold and frosts up and waits for it to warm up before the, the uh, when it warms up next time and then melts away. So this is gonna be cyclical, the problem won't go away continuously. Unfortunately, best way to deal with this is sealed units um, and that's my next point sometimes you will have windows where you get between the two panes of glass on a sealed units windows are actually sealed units triple or double pane um, sometimes those seals fail it does happen it's not the end of the world um, just replace the glazing easy enough to do 
Um, I do wanna give a shout out here to a company called Basco World, and that would be Basco, B-A-S-C-O world.com. Simon was the guy who was working for me on one of my projects. He did an absolute fabulous job, and we actually upgraded on one project um, all the windows from double pane to triple pane where we had extra space in the frame. These were wooden windows. So there's an option is to upgrade the glazing. Now, specifically, if you're taking a glass sealed unit that failed, think about upgrading to triple. There may be space, it may not. If there's no low E, no argon, add a, put a new sealed unit in that has low E and argon. So the one in Calgary I was dealing with this week, the windows we tested them did not have a low E coating, did not have argon gas, but the sealed unit had failed. Just upgrade that one piece of glass, but make sure it's one with a low E argon um, coating. And again, please go to, I suggest going to bascoworld.com, talk to Simon. Now, if you, even if you're not gonna replace windows completely, think about upgrades and glazing. If you've got a broken pane of glass, upgrade the glazing. There are options. But if you're really looking at a full upgrade to your home, think about going triple low E argon, Energy Star rated windows, and go and look at my video that I spoke about on windows, improved comfort, comfort aesthetics, resale value, it's gonna help you a lot. So make sure you're upgrading your windows. The other thing is as we, as you tighten up your house and people are becoming more and more energy conscious and that's fabulous, you may have had to blow a door done, you're gonna find that the humidity levels will increase the more you seal the home. That's called home as a system. You get these different things happening as you tighten up the home. So don't be surprised that you may need to run bathroom fans more, use those controls I was talking about earlier, Okay, the other option, which is a little more expensive from, an heat, uh, from a ventilation point of view, think about an HRV, heat recovery ventilator. This is a much more expensive item, but they're really nice systems. It ends up exhausting air to the outside, but while it's doing that, it brings outside air in, the outside air coming in dries it, it's not a dehumidifier, it's a heat recovery ventilator. I'll do a whole new video on HRVs in the near future, watch for that, or just do some research on HRVs or heat recovery ventilators, and that could be something you could consider for drying out the house. In both these cases, um, particularly the one in Calgary, I would say wasn't necessary in e uh, uh, the the perfect recommendation for today, but as the house gets better sealed, this may be something to, to, to go with in the future. And I did discuss um, with her how you could do it and do a simplified install. Um, that would be a consideration. HRV would help dry out the house. Um, in the house of my sister's house, maybe if the humidity continues to be an issue after dealing with moisture, dealing with windows, hey, something like an HRV and giving good ventilation in the home might be something worth considering. The problem a little bit in that case would be that she would require a fully ducted HRV. So now it's running ductwork, a little more complicated, but this will give that good indoor air quality. We all want those healthy homes, so think about maybe an HRV, even though that's got an electric baseboard, potentially going to heat pumps, um, but this will certainly help on the ventilation side, so you don't have to open up those windows. Um, you want to keep them closed and deal with the proper ventilation. Um, keep those interior door open. I just want to remind you, first thing, control the moisture in the home. Where's it coming from? That's your absolute first. Bathrooms, kitchen, when you're cooking, where's the moisture coming from? Maybe it's a structural problem. Think about that. And if you're really, really having an issue, you can get hold of us at Qualistat or at Energy Experts, and we can do some testing um, to help you. Uh, we can actually put data loggers in and see when the humidity goes up, when the humidity goes down. Um, make sure that you understand how that works. The next thing is, now you know where the moisture is, you know how to control it, um, you want to raise the surface temperature of the window. So that's changing to a brand new window, or windows plural, double low E, triple low E, that's what I'm recommending, triple low E argon, um, and then getting that air movement by running the fan on a continuous basis. And that's that idea of having a control switch that interlocks the exhaust fan and the the, the forced air system, i.e. furnace, so things are running on a more regular basis and you continue to get that air movement. Healthier home, better filtration, better humidity control. So um, let's quickly head down to the um, basement. Let's kind of have a quick conversation about, um, just as a reminder around the um, Hoimi damper and what it does, and uh, then we'll wrap up on this conversation. So again, my name's Stephen, I'm from uh, Vertitech or BT group of companies. Um, and you can find me at energyexperts.ca. Again, energyexperts.ca. Um, and hopefully you're finding these little videos useful. So if you've done an energy evaluation, this is something I've done to broaden the scope of knowledge. 
down in the mechanical room and uh, I've just flipped the camera the other way around. So we're looking at the ductwork on a forced air system, right? So if you please go and look at my Hoimi damper conversation, um, we'll talk about that in great detail again. But there is the that, that duct there, the one that is in plastic, that's a vapor barrier to stop condensation forming that goes from the outside in. And you can see it at the back there. It comes all the way in and then connects into the return air side of the furnace. There's connecting into the return air side. As you can see that, if I look at the furnace, on the left hand side is my return air. So when the furnace fan is running, what is happening is there's a negative pressure in that ductwork. Outside air will be drawn in. Outside air will be drying out the house. If that is interlocked with your bathroom exhaust fan, what that means is a fan is air is being exhausted to the outside. Outside air is being brought in through this duct and that is going to help ventilate that's fresh air that's good for your health but it is also going to help with the um, drying and keeping the moisture levels under control so there is your fresh air from the outside goes into the return air you run to run the fan if you've got an ecm motor go and have a look at my uh, my uh, video on furnaces and talks about different types of motors and different ways to operate them um, that's what you want to have a look at as you can see this one does have a humidifier this one has its um, an independent control, which I did on the return air side because it couldn't hook up to my Ecobee on this house. But I do strongly recommend go and have a look at Ecobee, go and have a look at the ambient reset. That's what you want to do. Okay, so just closing off on this one. As a reminder, this is a Hoimi damper. Uh, H-O-Y-M-E, there's a whole video I did on Hoimi dampers and what would you use this for? This would go into that return air, or so that cold air return, that fresh air, whatever you want to call it, that's where that would go and that would minimize the outside air coming in when the furnace fan is not running, you can control it different ways. So please go and look at my video on Hoimi, fresh air intake, makeup air dampers. So energyexperts.ca is my best place to reach me. Um, the VT group of companies, which is Acacia Engineering, Vertitech, and Qualistat. There's all information on all of those about similar subjects. Please go and have a look at us, energyexperts.ca. If you are looking at replacing windows, don't forget to get your energy assessment done because there are government grants. If you have problems with moisture in your home, attic rain, anything like that, that's a Qualistat side of things, and that's what we're here to help you with. So again, my name is Stephen. Thanks for watching me today, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying these little YouTubes.